This segment is being brought to you by Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Join us in preserving and protecting Tennessee's wildlife. All right, welcome back, everyone. You can call us here at 737-7767 with any phone call you might have or questions you might have concerning hunting or fishing. We'll try to answer them. I do want to say that I was wrong about something last week. Now, that, you'd say, well, what? He, uh, yep, I was wrong. I make mistakes just like everybody else does. And uh, we had a caller that called in and called about electronic game calls. Now, I found out the truth. Uh, I called my good friend Tim Cleveland, Region 2 Supervisor at TWRA, and you can use electronic game calls to call in coyotes all through the season. The thing you have to be careful with, you cannot have any call that would do like if it's turkey season right now. You cannot have a call or electronic call or a cassette or anything else that has turkey on it. You can't have a mouth call. You can't have a, a box. You can't have a slate. You can't have anything that can lure that big game animal of the hunting season that it, it is. You can hunt coyotes with an electronic game call during deer season, but it can't have a phone bleat. It can't have anything that has to do with deer. So that's the stipulation, and I'm glad that that caller called in. I did write that caller and tell him I apologize, but I was wrong, but I'm here to make it all right. So, uh, you know, everybody makes mistakes, and, and it's those are <laughs> big guys that can own up to them. Better to ask forgiveness than permission. You got that. You got <laughs> Well, the phones have been lit, lighting up, guys, and we need to take some calls here. We have... Tim, 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 how can we help you tonight? Well, I think you just answered my question. I was, I was wanting to know if I could hunt coyotes on core property with an electronic collar, and should I have to use my muzzle loader? You do not. I hang up. All right, Tim. I will. I'll be glad to answer that because I found out. I, I did from last week's show. Uh, you do not have to use a muzzle loader. You can use a rifle during this turkey season to bag and harvest coyotes. But the stipulation is, just remember, Tim, you can't have, even in your truck, you can't have, uh, or vehicle, you can't have a turkey call, a mouth call, a box, a slate, a decoy that even remotely looks like a turkey. You can't have any of that if you're going to use an electronic game call even on wildlife management area or private land. So make sure you put all the turkey hunting stuff in the drawer or the closet before you go coyote hunting, but you can use your rifle. So great, great question. Tim, I hope that helps you out. And Randy, Randy, how can we help you tonight? Uh, yes, you, you, uh, well, you just answered one of my questions. I was going to, I called a couple of my buddies about the, the wildlife resource agents, and they just told me exactly what you said. Uh, but my other question is, I don't know whether you've ever done it, but uh, below the Pickwick Dam, they fish for smallmouth in some turbulent water every year, and you don't ever hear nobody getting drowned down there. Right. And I'll hang up and listen. You're exactly right. He's exactly right. I yep. meant, uh, I've been. I've done that. You've done it. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not. And, and that's going to change this summer. Before the summer's out, Hugh McNaughton's going to fish uh, Pickwick. But it's a great lake. But even one of the uh, Davy Height won the BASS championship below the dam. Mm. Uh, was it two, three, four years ago I now? I think so. About four mm. years ago. And he won the championship below the dam. So that he's right. But now people need to know that the uh, Pickwick is on TVA river. That's system. right. That's right. So. Um, what, what we're going to have to rig our balance Music City Bass where we get our fish off down there. That's right. That's it. Hey, we can rig it. You and I, we can rig it. We can rig it. Boys, y'all better be ready to go. <laughs> All right. And Jerry, Jerry, how can we help you tonight? Hey, Hugh. Yes, sir. Uh, and this is Jerry. Jerry and Joyce over here in Goodnessville. How y'all doing? All right. It's been a while since I talked to you. But yeah. I wanted to ask you something. Okay. Uh, about those barriers you're talking about putting up. Yeah. You know, uh, there's a lot of, you know, logs and limbs and trash and stuff that build up, you know, the downs and uh, when they open those gates, 
that's going to go down there and uh, build up against those barriers. You know, eventually that stuff's going to break loose, and if there's someone fishing on the other side, what's going to happen there? That's a very good uh, question, uh, Jerry. I'll let you go. All right. I appreciate it. That's a very good question. They thought know, about that. They, I don't think they thought about it. Um, you know, they uh, how they're going to get, because they use a crane that's on a dre uh, on a barge to go in there like they did that May that we had all the, the floods. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a crane that actually picked the, the stuff up with a claw and set it on there, and they piled it all up. Um, I don't know how they're going to do it. If they chain that off or cable it off or use iron or steel pipe, I don't know how they can do it. They'll have to anchor it somewhere. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he's right. If those gates open up and all that debris falls through, Eventually, it's going to be a log jam center somewhere. And you also know there's nothing more powerful than Mother Nature as mm. far as water. I mean, water yeah. does more damage than anything else. Yeah. And uh, it could tear all that stuff out. Or it could force it to the side and where they have the uh, uh, locks to go through. Where you lock through, it may damage the walls there. Yeah. So yeah. I think there's a whole lot here that a lot of people aren't. The, the pressure of this has come from somewhere yeah. deeper or deeper. higher than, than we, what we will ever that, know. That's right. <laughs> You're exactly right. Uh, All right, we got Greg. Greg, how can we help you tonight? Hi, Hugh. Yes, sir. Uh, I really enjoy your show, and I like what you're doing with uh, all the younger kids and stuff. Well, thank you very much, Greg. Well, the reason I'm calling is uh, because of this dam issue, mm -hmm. and I really want to know what Senator Alexander and uh, Senator Corker and our representatives in the House are doing because the House writes the checks yes. that fund all this stuff. Yes. And I'm just here to encourage everybody, let your Congress people know, let these senators know. Uh, you know, when we had the vote, you know, about our hunting and fishing rights, it was an incredible turnout. Yes. Uh, and they need to know that they need to do something. You're right. I, I'm going to hang up. I'm going to give you a little bit of, of stuff. Now, we brought out in the meeting, they're asking for two point, they're asking to fund this, Harvey, am I correct? $2.5 million is what they wanted to appropriate or budgeted for this. Somewhere. Here we are. <clears throat> We're at $14 trillion deficit. We got a Congress and a House that can't pass a a balanced budget. We're looking at cliffs here and cliffs there, and we got unemployment is up and down, up and down, and here we got a group asking for more. Now, I got a little problem with all this going on, you know? I've had how a problem about, with it. How about yeah. let's pay some of our bills off and quit being worried about China's going to take us over tomorrow because they own us because they'll just call the note. Well, this ain't broke, so why fix it? And that's it. And here you are asking for another two and a half million dollars. Where do you think that stuff comes from? You know, it comes out of your pocket and your pocket and mine and everybody else's that's in this in the studio. It comes out of their pockets. And I just, when you frivolously spend stuff like that, I got a little problem with it. And uh, now if I thought it was going to do any good, I'd be all for it. And then on top of that, to do what they want to do, they're going to neglect what we do use. And they're stopping projects, but they're not saying we're stopping them for now. We'll we'll resume them a little bit later. They're not doing that. They're not saying anything about. It. I think they've overstepped their bounds just a little bit here. But I'm just like that caller. Let's please call your congressman. Let Lamar Alexander call his office. Email him. He's got a great website. Lamar Alexander. Get on his website and tell him, we support what you're trying to do, Lamar Alexander, and we thank you for thinking about the taxpayers of Tennessee and Kentucky. All right? We got uh, number five here is Joey. Joey, how can we help you tonight? Um, yes, sir. I have two or three hunting questions. Sure. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. How long should I call between uh, six witnesses? Now, you're talking about turkeys, right? Yes, sir. Uh, that gets a little that it's a little uh, experience you're going to have to you're going to have to get some experience in that because the reason I say that 
you can get a hot gobbler. I meant one that's gobbling on the limb, just, just really giving it down the road. He pitches down, lands on the ground. He's just steadily giving it heck. Uh, he's gobbling. He wants all the hens within a, a five-county region to understand where he is. That's a gobbler that, that you can kill. I'm telling you, you can call to him just a little bit, get his attention. But here, I'm going to give you a trick, a, a great, great tip. Always call, except for when, they're, when you're calling to their head and they're coming to you. If, they're calling, if you're calling to his fan and he's walking away, call. If you're calling him and he's walking to either side away from you, call. But when he's walking towards you, leave him alone. That's the a, that's a best way I know to do it. And just figure out the mood. It's like fishing. Uh, you don't know whether to go fast with that crankbait, slow with that crankbait, or medium speed. Because let the fish tell you. Let the turkey tell you what he likes to hear, okay? Okay. All right, what's your next one? Uh, what about decoys? Uh, help put them from one second. Decoys are another thing that you're going to have to learn by experience, but I tell you, a hen decoy, a single hen or, or two hen decoys will work great right now. I do not profess that everybody uses a, a gobbler right now. I mean, some have had some great success with it. Not everybody knows how to use a gobbler decoy, but if you got two hens, they're great. Use one with a slate, one with a box or a mouth call. You're giving different sounds of different hens. Uh, you're making it sound like there's more than one. He may just leave that two or three that he's with so he can pick up two new girlfriends for Friday night. Mm. All right? All right, I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Hey, appreciate all those fine calls out here. <clears throat> and, and please, when you, when you go out there in the woods or on the water and you have a great day, and you think it's a great day, take a picture and send it to us. We'd love to show them on the show. We're going to do our product of the week right now. So let's this go week's to tip of the week is being brought to you by Interstate Batteries of Music City, located at 3729 Highway 109 North in Lebanon, Tennessee, home of your alternative power source. All right, welcome back. And this week's tip, uh, product of the week, not tip of the week, product of the week. We got it ma kind of messed up there just a little bit. Hey, Wes and Billy Sneed up there in, in Kentucky sent me this right here. This is their new Sneed product. They have got some great, great looking swim baits. Let me show you this one right here. This is their uh, one of their uh, premier new colors. And this is awesome. This will wear them out on gunner. Gunnersville likes purple anyway, that royal purple, and that's what Billy and Wes have done right here with a swim bait. It's got a square tail or like a diamond-like tail. It will have a lot of action to it. Throw that umbrella rig out there with about four or five of these on there in Alabama. Tennessee, you better only have three. <laughs> but it is a great, great bait, and they got that color, and they've got what I normally call just a natural uh, shad color right here. It's got a lot of gray and silver and sparkles and it will flat make uh, it look uh, real lifelike. So take that right there. That's our product of the week. Hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Waters. We got a great recipe for you, so hurry back. This segment is being brought to you by Covenant Heating and Cooling. Providing excellence in comfort solutions. This week's recipe of the week is being brought to you by Broker Headquarters Group. Let our team in camo help you with all of your real estate needs. All right. Well, speaking about things happening down below the dam, there's a lot of catfish down there. You know that as well as I do. That's where catfish come up there to get those easy meals. And boy, has Joy found the guy that can turn that that tug in that line to be a, a a great delicacy on the plate so joy tell us all about this catfish over there well the catfish king of That's Tennessee right. of the world world jugging contest over and over and over my brothers this is my baby brother scott and not only did i grow up with three boys that taught my dad our dad yes. everybody cooked Absolutely. Everybody, including our dad. And with my little brother Scotty is 
his granddaughter, this is Madison, Second and this is Brooklyn. And, you know, your caller a while ago, he's right. We're big into kids. I know Johnny is. We need some boats for the Easter seal. I saw that on Facebook to help. May 11th, if anyone wants to come out. I mean, it's something that it's just so rewarding. You just cannot believe it. And they have somebody to help you. Hugh can tell you, email us, whatever. But any ideas they have to Hugh for any children or anything or to help, we're into it. We're there. Scotty? Yes, ma'am. Um, besides the rain and getting here, um, yes. Hugh's not listening, so you can tell me the truth. Did you bake this just for him because he's not supposed to eat fried food or... I'm on his team. I baked it for him. <laughs> I did. I did. Plus, I was pretty pushed for time. It takes a little longer to fire. Well, usually you smoke, smoke it. it. Usually well, you yeah. do smoke it on the grill, which is good. Sharon but, likes it more oh. baked, but, you know. smell a vision mm. mm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> tell us what you do. All right, this particular, these are uh, channel and blue cat. Uh, I prefer pound and a half to two and a half pounds is, is excellent for that, whether you're uh, baking it or uh, if you're going to smoke it. Smoke it. Uh, this is baked. Uh, you can use this recipe, though, on pretty much any fish you want to. Uh, Got to put a I, plug in for <clears throat> little brother. And for oh, absolutely. It. Believe me. Uh, my brother, this is made with cabos, which is, uh, he lives in Orlando, and it's uh, available uh, at uh, cabos beef jerky uh, at gmail.com. Okay. Okay. And uh, it's made with cabos. You can use, I prefer this, of course. Uh, you can use Old Bay, works very well. Does it? Yeah, but this is the stuff. And uh, if I'm going to bake it as opposed to smoke it, uh, I make a kosher smoked garlic salt. And that's, and that's good. On there. But you smoke really? that on your smoker. Yes, well, I smoke yeah. it for days. That'll be yeah. another television show. Uh, You'll yes. have to do uh, that. Yes. So, I mean, can you use butter, lemon, anything you want, garlic? I mean, you know, garlic it's your butter. preference. You can play with it. Uh, you know, I actually put a, a little bit of butter on it. Yeah. Uh, and I actually put the his seasoning and everything has garlic in it. It's got like 12 different seasonings in it. Okay. And, uh, but you can play with it. Uh, you know, sometimes you can take thin sliced lemon and put on it before you, you cook it. And it's excellent. I love it that way. Or you can squeeze a little lemon on it after. It's really, really hard to mess this up. Well, it's, it's simple. Throw it on there, put the seasoning on, throw it in the oven about 350 for about 40, 45 minutes, and Done. you can't well, go you wrong. you can smell it. Mm, yeah, it smells it, good. It, it the girls want to say hi to their mom. You want to wave oh. to your mom and Mimi? Wave. Hey, say hi. Mom. Hey, Mimi. Wave, baby. You're not going to wave. <laughs> Thank you, Hugh. Appreciate right. it. Thank well, y'all. Mm, we appreciate them, and you can catch this recipe along with many, many others on our website, southernwoodsandwaters.com. Click on the recipe section, and Joy should have it up there. Uh, by tomorrow, hopefully. So uh, we'll have that tasty little delight for you set up. Hey, uh, tell you what, we are just inundated with uh, a lot of people wanting to know what fishing is going on right now. So we're going to change just a second here and quit talking about the core and start talking about the good things. And that is cabin fever has finally, uh, uh, hopefully, has uh, dropped his little head, and so we can get out there and play now. <laughs> so <laughs> let me give you some great fishing reports. I uh, spoke to Mark Travis tonight. Mark Travis, uh, he owns the Crappie Guide Service. You can catch him at crappieguideservice.com. But he's a great, great crappie fisherman, Lake Normandy, Lake Woods, Old Hickory, Percy Priest. But he gave me a Percy Priest report, and he said, Hugh, I'm catching a lot of 13, 14-inch crappie. Here's how he's doing it. He's fishing with his lines 20 feet deep in 50 foot of water. That's right. And he's going over and raking over old treetops along the old river banks. So uh, big crappie. He said you can catch the smaller ones, the 10 and 11 inch crappie, up river. They're, they're going shallow, and it's a pretty good uh, bite up there. Now, he uses a lot of minnows and stuff like that. So he said you can use grubs, you can use plastic tubes. But he says, thank goodness, it's back to normal. This is what he means. The dogwoods are starting to bloom, so it's a great time to be crappie fishing 
on Percy Priest. So uh, you can catch him there at crappyguideservice.com and tell Mark Travis you saw it right here on Southern Woods and Waters. Also, we talked to Bobby Gentry. Bobby Gentry up here at Dale Hollow Lake, and uh, he goes out of Hendricks Creek Resort. Let me tell you something. You can't find anybody better than Bobby Gentry, and you can't find a better place to stay than Hendricks Creek Resort on beautiful Dale Hollow Lake. He said, Hugh, the river is running 49 to 50 degrees. The backs of the creeks are 52 to 53 degrees. We got clear mid lake and a lot of stained pockets. He's catching a lot of small uh, smallies and brown fish on shaky heads and jigs, using swim baits sometimes on secondary points just off of those spawning flats next to deep water. He said, I'm giving you my secrets. He said, just the swim baits, jigs, and, of course, uh, the shaky heads. And he's just using a uh, little four- and five-inch shaky head worm. So just finessing, but it's a great thing. You can call Bobby Gentry and book a good Dale Holla smallmouth fishing trip with that man, 270-427-0419, or simply go to Southern Woods and Waters, and he has a link. We have a link to him on Southern Woods and Waters. Good friend, Brian Carper. Brian Carper, uh, uh, awfully great, great fisherman, but he also does uh, a lot of ambulance work. He's working paramedics tonight. He said, Hugh, the old hickory crappie are moving up. Tubes and grubs are being great right now on old hickory. The bass are in their pre-spawn uh, uh, part right now. He said, crankbaits, rattle traps, jigs, using secondary points in the creeks up the lake. Go to BrianCarper.com, and he'll be glad to take you out fishing. And uh, so uh, give those guys a call. Hey, we got uh, our uh, giveaway tonight. We've got some plastics that I know you're going to love by a $35 value. Go by and check them out. Be our fifth caller, 737-7767. You'll be our proud winner. We'll bring you more of Southern Woods and Waters in just a minute. This week's calendar of events is brought to you by Stand Up Chicks, where we stand up against the rest. All right, welcome back, everyone. And our winner was Gerald Smith from Gordonsville. I, I tell you what, Gerald, if you can't catch him with this, buddy, just come on and, and I'll go with you. Maybe we can catch him together. <laughs> I tell you what, that's a nice, nice package. I got a couple of events for you this weekend, Saturday the 6th. Uh, begins uh, Kentucky's youth um, turkey season. It's for Saturday and Sunday. Then the following weekend, the 13th and 14th, will be the big girls and big boys' turn to go after those Kentucky birds. Uh, so get ready for that. Rock Bottom has got a tournament um, going out Sunday the 7th out at Old Hickory Lake. Uh, that's Rock Bottom. And, and they're a local group, and they do an awfully good job. And I also want to tell you, Sunday, Old Hickory, Lake, Old Hickory Tournament Trail is going to go out of Lone Branch. Uh, that's uh, Andy, Jeanette, and those fine guys, and Russell, and Mary, and all those people. It's $50 a boat, $10 for Big Fish Pot, uh, so you can go out there and have a good day. That's this Sunday. Uh, it will be April the 7th, April 7th. So uh, I want to also mention to you, the 19th annual uh, Austin P. State University Governor's Bass Tournament is going to be May the 11th. May the 11th, Paris Landon State Park at Kentucky Lake. We'll bring you more and more stuff like that. But also this Friday, uh, the 5th, is the Wilson County uh, National Rifle Association Friends of the NRA Banquet. That's going to be over there at the fairgrounds in Lebanon. So go by there and see those folks. They got a lot of nice things to give uh, to you can bid on. Harvey Craft, thank you so much for being on the show. We got less than 20 seconds. Appreciate Johnny you, Coleman, thank you Good so much here. for being on the show. Thank you for all your wisdom and experience out there. We really appreciate it and, and look up to you guys. And we really want everybody to know, please contact your congressman, your House of Representatives, Lamar Alexander. Tell them thank you and tell them what you'd like to see. We'll see you right here next week. See you then.